Hello everybody and welcome to this course about creating lightsaber battles using the open source software OpenTools. If you're interested in following the entire course, you can find it on Skillshare or on Udemy. There's a link in the description. In the previous video, we used GIMP to cut out one of my arms. In this video, we are going to import it to OpenTunes. We're going to animate it falling and give it a little bounce at the bottom. So let's do this. Okay, let's import the severed arm into our OpenTunes project. And let's immediately move it down to the bottom of the animation by pressing Ctrl X. And Ctrl V. Remember, the white rectangle shows a drawing area, and if we drag the arm out of the drawing area, it just disappears. So we have to either increase the drawing area or we have to stick to using the animation tool. I choose for the latter. I'm going to use the animation tool to set the position of the arm right over where the actual arm is in the original footage. This is just as the lightsaber is about to cut off the arm. So we now we have the image of the severed arm floating above the original footage. Next, we're going to animate this severed arm falling. To do that, we go a few frames later. And let's move it all the way down to the floor using the animation tool. And we're also going to rotate it so that it lies flat. So let's see what we have. We just have the arm falling and hitting the floor. In fact, let's extend the animation just a little bit and let's freeze the last frame of the original footage. Let's slow down the playback to about half speed. And as we can see, the arm just falls down in a quite an unceremonious way. We're going to tweak the fall of the arm now to make it look a bit more natural. A bit more like a real fall. Right now, the arm rotates instantaneously and falls down at a constant speed. That's not exactly realistic. So the first thing we're going to do is create a little bounce after the arm hits the ground. As an initial guess, we'll say the bounce lasts 6 frames. So let's put a keyframe 6 frames later. And about halfway between the two keyframes, the arm will be at its peak. Uh, I also think that the arm won't just bounce in one position, but it's likely to move a bit to the left as it bounces. So let's set that up too. Okay, so we have a very simple bounce now. So let's add a little rotation into the mix. Don't forget that the ball, the arm doesn't start rotated, but the original rotation is zero degrees. Yeah, I think I overdid the rotation a bit, so I'm going to copy the rotation from this keyframe and paste it to this one. So let's see what we have. So it's getting a little confusing with all these keyframes. I think now is a good idea to switch 
to a graph view. To do that, first open the function editor, and on this little rectangle here, we can open the function curves. We can use the function editor to pick which variables we want to see, and usually right click on the function curves and choose fit curve to get a good view of how the parameter you're interested in is changing. Right now we're looking at the X coordinate, in other words, the horizontal position. We can move these points in an intuitive way, and we can even delete data points using right click, delete. Better. Okay, so let's tweak the rotation a bit. By the way, I'm editing this video quite a lot to make it easier to follow, so it might look like I know exactly what I'm doing. But what's happening behind the scenes is that I'm experimenting a lot and it's not always going well. And then so I'm, it's a kind of try on error approach. So I hope I'm not misleading you and thinking you have to do it right the first time. It's going to take some try on error uh, bef before you figure out what works and what doesn't work. So if you are messing around with this and getting a bit confused and feeling a bit frustrated, don't worry, don't worry. That's perfectly normal. I also feel like that sometimes. Uh, don't worry, being confused actually means you're learning something. Anyway, back to the video. I just moved the start marker so that I can more easily play back the video to focus only on the part where the arm is falling. And I can see what I need to tweak a bit more. Okay, so now that we have got the bounce more or less done, let's focus on the rate at which the arm is falling. Right now, the arm is falling at a constant speed. This is not realistic. Let's open the function curve for the y coordinate or the vertical coordinate. We see that the arm moves downwards at a constant rate. In fact, we know from high school physics that falling objects usually fall according to a parabola. Well, who knew that high school physics would actually come in handy? We can change the shape of this line by right-clicking on it and selecting Speed In, Speed Out. When we do that, we get a new curve. We can set the shape of the curve by clicking and dragging on these handles. In this way, we see that the rate at which the arm drops starts very slowly and speeds up and speeds up and speeds up and abruptly stops when it hits the ground. So let's see how it looks. Yeah, the fall looks a bit more natural than it did before. Okay, let's do the same to modify the bounces. One good thing about the function curve is it's quite easy to play around with it and experiment it. And we can even exaggerate, but we can easily see how things look like when we change them around. And there we have it. That's a pretty solid fall and bounce animation. I hope this video was useful for you. In the next video, we are going to use a special effect called local transparency to erase my arm from the original footage. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. So long. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, 
why not support this channel by liking and subscribing. You can also check out my website for more free stuff. So long for now, see you in the next video. Bye bye.